our world has changed. We've all been impacted. Some of us are feeling overwhelmed. Some are bored. Some are lonely. Some are grieving. No one is unaffected. But some things haven't changed. We still live in a self-help world. A helpless world. A world that is in need of rescue. It was to this world that God sent his son to come and rescue humanity because of his great love for us. Our church buildings may be closed, but the good news of Jesus Christ is as relevant as ever. God is still at work. His word is still going out. And he called us his people to share it with those who haven't heard it before. The Word One to One gives you everything you need to open the Bible with your friends so that you can share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. It's simply John's Gospel in an easy to use format with helpful notes to guide your conversation. An unintimidating way for any Christian to introduce their friends to Jesus in his word. You don't need to be a Bible teacher or evangelist. You simply need to be a loving friend, trusting God's spirit to be at work as you chat through John's Gospel, verse by verse. We've already seen fruit as we've shared the word. Even during these unsettling times, we've moved sessions online. We've started new ones to ones with our neighbours, our colleagues, our friends, our family. Some near to us and some continents away. So why not join us? If you're already a follower of Jesus, then you've already got everything you need to share the good news with others. What better time is there to share it? But maybe you are new to the Christian message. Why not use this time to look at a message that has stood through centuries of disruption and change? Ask a Christian friend or a church near you. Look into the life of Jesus and see the extraordinary claims he made. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? What's stopping you? Hi everyone, and uh, and thank you for joining. I was going to say good afternoon, um, but looking at the participants, it looks like uh, quite an international audience. So it's it's brilliant to have you with us. Uh, my name is Lefraz. Uh, I've been sharing the Bible with my uh, my friends and my colleagues for the last seven or so years uh, and I've been directing the Word One to One ministry for the last 18 months and it's a it's a joyful work it's a joyful ministry as we see um, many Christians uh, normal Christians sometimes the most surprising Christians discover vibrant uh, evangelistic ministry amongst uh, those uh, around them amongst their friends our mission at the word one to one uh, is to work alongside church leaders to see bible sharers christians who are confident uh, to share god's word with uh, with with those around them raised up uh, in their congregations imagine if just 10 percent or even 20 percent of your congregation your average sunday gathering uh, are proactively looking for opportunities uh, to share God's word and doing doing that uh, proactively. Imagine what that would mean for church life. Imagine what that would mean for your mission together. By God's grace, uh, that is what we are laboring towards. And we're very grateful for all uh, the, the, the gospel partners the Lord is, is giving us. We're grateful to our friends of the Proclamation Trust for inviting us uh, to hold this webinar. And didn't Gwilym do a wonderful job this morning unpacking John chapter 17? All flesh will see the glory of God as they engage with the message of the cross through the apostles' word as it's lived and spoken by the church. All flesh will see the glory of God. That is what we pray 
uh, for our churches, and that was that, that is what we pray for your churches um, as you as you lead them. We've got with us today uh, a, a representatives from a couple of churches. Uh, so we've got Rico Tais and Christine Armstrong from uh, All Souls Langham Place. Uh, so they're representing the, uh, you know, the, the, the big churches with the ministry teams and the outreach budgets, which is wonderful to have churches like that. Um, and then we've got Mike and Sharon, uh, who's joining us from uh, Bethel Church in Farnham, uh, who are representing, dare I say it, uh, the more normal churches. And, uh, and then we've got Mark Gamble, my friend and colleague uh, based in Glasgow, whose job it is to, to share the Bible with those around him and to help church leaders uh, equip their congregations. So it's really great to have you all with us and we look forward to hearing from you. Um, so on the screen, I'm just gonna put the plan for the next few minutes. Um, let me Give me a sec on that. Sorry, guys. So the plan for today is, is simply um, that outline. Uh, we're thinking about developing a culture of Bible sharing. Uh, so we're sort of assuming that you're familiar with the word one-to-one -one or the idea of, of, of sharing the Bible with, with non-Christians. That that's what we're talking about, evangelism. Um, no worries if, if you aren't. Uh, there's lots of help on our website. Just go to the word one to onecom There's also regular um, webinars that will, that will help you get started uh, with, with Bible sharing. So, so please go and use the website uh, for that. But please stick with us because I'm sure what, what we're about to discuss is going to be of value to you. And we're going to start with a man who's given this a lot more thought uh, than, than I have. Rico, I recently watched your uh, your video, which is still uh, the most watched on our on our YouTube channel, um, and uh, that was six years ago when we launched the Word One to One. So, we've really valued your friendship and the close partnership with uh, with Christianity Explored Ministries. Uh, please tell us, Rico, why why is Bible sharing so important uh, in our culture today? Well, I think if if you, you think about where we think the power is in our ministry. The power, of course, we believe is in the word of God. So as we preach Christ, as we open the Bible, God opens blind eyes. So that, that's the heart of what we're doing. We believe that Jesus walks off the pages of scripture. And therefore, my job is to get the Bible open. And evangelism, here's my definition of evangelism. It's teaching the Bible to non-Christians. I just want to get the Bible open and say, well, you know, what do you make of Jesus? There's a pain line to cross as I do that, but that's where I think the power is. But as the Bible goes out, Lefraz, um, the key thing that we're saying is it's not just from the front. We can't just have biblical pulpits. We've got to have biblical churches. So in your church, I just want to ask how you go on this. Are we teaching it from the front? I'm sure if you're here, you're trying to do that. Is it going out in a small group? Is the one-to-one -one work happening? And then are people reading it for themselves at home? And often I say, score yourselves, front, small group, one-to-one -one and home, in terms of how your, how your church is going on that front. Now, when we look back, say, to Haringey and Billy Graham coming 1954, 1955 to this country, basically, it was just from the front preaching that did the job. Billy, you know, people came in their coaches to Haringey. They repented and believed that night. Certainly at All Souls, there'd be a guest service, then they'd be straight into a group. You know, you, you, you just teach from the front. But of the, um, the 40,000 people that were converted at Haringey, 2 million went, 90% were already in church. So you just preach from the front. They've got a Christian background they're in and, 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 and they're coming to faith. But then we found, and this was the development of the courses, and certainly when I arrived at All Souls 25 years ago, people, it wasn't just repent and believe you needed to give them more background of course the lord can do anything but so then we started courses like alpha and christianity explored started running and were very effective with the low-hanging fruit over the next 15 years i guess to about 2015 
um, uh, as people went along and, and, and when they were asked to go, they knew they should go because they had some Christian background. But now uh, uh, there's almost no low hanging fruit. And how do we connect with people? Because they won't come to church and quite often they won't come to a course. Well, this is where one-to-one -one is so critical because I, I, I've got to equip people to be able to share the Bible so that say they come along at Christmas, if they come along at Christmas, it used to be they'd drop themselves into a Christianity Explored course. They won't now. They need something to, 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 to keep them going, to feed them before coming to a course where they learn church. And this is why I'm so totally committed to trying to train the church family in one-to-one -one in the present culture. Even more so, actually, with COVID. Because what's amazing about COVID is, as you all know, vast numbers of people are watching online but how do we go from them being spectators to connecting? Well, the one-to-one -one stuff enables me to start reaching out to them. I mean, it's incredible how many people are watching. I mean, I've never, you know, the, the spiritual doors that are opening that have been shut for, for decades is amazing. In every part of my life, old boys from my school or, or people on my street, or I mean, wherever I look, parents from school, people are hungry, but what's the, how am I gonna glue them in? Now, just in terms of the, the great benefits of doing one-to-one -one, uh, 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 in this culture where people are so isolated, you can under, understanding, uh, as I meet with them, I start finding out where they are as I read through John with them and let them read as well. And, you know, we just go through the tool. They, you know, they often read it for themselves, but we just read it out loud and chat. Application, what does it mean for their life? Example, they can see into my life confidentiality no one's going to know as we talk about the tough things of following Jesus it's a safe place what's their next step training how do I tell them what to do next because I've got that relationship going and flexibility we can meet when we like now all those things are amazing benefits that, that I need even if I'm running at a course in and around the course so what I'd say is the culture's changed because we believe the bible must go out how does it do that front small group one-to-one -one and at home and I guess on getting people to those those different things in front of preaching in a small group reading together and looking at for yourself here's the issue and this is what's extraordinary the most important one is the one-to-one -one, is the person who's actually coaching them in behind helping them you know what's your next step so the people we're seeing converted at all souls time and again the, 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 the fact that they have in common, apart from the fact the Lord opened their blind eyes, is the fact that someone has been tracking them a bit, getting the Bible open with them. So just, again, so critical for what we're trying to do today. Front small group, one-to-one -one at home, but who puts them to, who gets them to listen to preaching from the front? Who puts them in a small group? Who tells them how to read it for themselves? In a Christian home, it used to be by osmosis, but now we need to be much more intentional. And here's the issue I finish with. This is the battle. In so many of our churches, this didn't happen to us. People just came along. So we now need a culture change where people who didn't have it done to them, but came along because they were in a Christian environment and their parents did it by osmosis and automatically. How do we help them to do it now? And that's where there's this great battle to be getting this tool out because I'm convinced one-to-one -one is the silver bullet for the next 25 years. I'm a course guy. I've spent my life doing courses. But if I can't develop this one-to-one, -one, the people who are on the courses aren't going to be tracked and followed up and helped into church life. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. I'm just convinced that if I can get 10 to 20% of the church doing this, then it's going to transform our ability to find lost sheep, to follow them up, to look after them properly. That's really clear and helpful, Rico. Thank you. Um, so you've mentioned the word culture a couple of times. Um, could you just tell us, uh, and, and let's bring Mike in on the conversation as well as, a, as, a, as another church leader. So to Mike and to Rico, could you just interact a little bit around uh, what it means for you as a church leader to, to, to drive that culture change, to shape that culture change? What, what are the things you as church leaders need to be thinking about, doing, praying about, etc. Um, Rico, you start and Mike will come in. Um, well, the, 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 fir the first thing is, Lafraz, I've got to be modeling it myself. So tonight I'm reading with Eduardo, 
we'll read online. We, if you look at the front of the All Souls website, there it is, this page where you can go and we'll just literally go through it together, um, the word one-to-one. -one. So I'm modeling it and, and that shows it's important. But secondly, in terms of people who are bringing on board, say a staff member, I think there are four things on a staff member that are just critical. Number one, do they take their day off? If they don't, they're going to crash. So they've got to have a view of God's sovereignty and take a day off. Secondly, do they read the Bible personally for themselves? You know, are they, are they refilling themselves by the Bible each day, going to the well? Thirdly, um, uh, um, um, what about um, uh, uh, um, making sure that they're doing things regularly with non-Christians? I do a chess club. But fourth, are they just Bible sharers? Will they just get the Bible open? And if they're not prepared to do that as a member of staff, then then we're not doing the right thing with our time. So I want to try and change the culture by recruiting people who do this. And if they don't do this, they're not modeling the, the vine work we have to do. Mm. Absolutely critical to that. Over to you, Mike. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, th I think leaders need to, we're, we're, the, we're the face of the church. We're the people that need to give it uh, priority. But, but we, we can't do it all. And, and so we have, to, we have to find bright sparks in our con congregation who can uh, keep challenging us on it and keep saying, you know, we, haven't, we need to give this profile, we need to tell some good news stories on this and um, keep, keep up the profile in the congregation. But I think as leaders too, our, our responsibility is to have some assessment of how we can try and move our congregation on. So mm -hmm. crudely, I think of my congregation in sort of three ways with evangelism. You've got the real keenies who are good. They're the people who always invite people. They are gold dust. Um, then you've got a middle group who are keen, um, but perhaps they lack uh, boldness. Perhaps they lack confidence. Perhaps they don't give it sufficient priority. Uh, and then in my group, and this might be a UK free church problem, some of my strongest Christians are so much in the subculture, they have no non-Christian contacts at all. Mm. So they're my best prayers, they're my best givers, but they're my least effective evangelists. So, so when we planned training for Word One to One, we didn't invite those people at all. We, we put something else on for them because um, if you put something on, those guys will turn up, they'll take the spaces. Uh, we deliberately targeted the people in the middle group. Uh, and um, for me, it's filled a real gap in our evangelistic kind of strategy because I think it's given uh, people who perhaps lack confidence, here, this is something I can do. Uh, I, there's, some, there's a tool in their hands that they can use. So there's a willingness there, but there's a lack of confidence. They don't think they know enough, but here's a tool you can use. Just go through it. If there's questions at the end you can't answer, you know, come back to them the following week. Um, and actually, this is an easy ask. Mm. Um, it's, it's easier with a good friend uh, to, for them to get into something you're already passionate about. They know the Bible means a lot to you. Then perhaps to invite them to a course in a, in a room where they, do, where they don't know people. So for me, um, I think I was experiencing a level of frustration about evangelism. <laughs> How do we move the middle group on? And I think one-to-one -one training has been really useful in that. So we're quite new to it. Um, but it's already, I'm seeing more people now actively engaged in evangelism because it's it's given them a tool they can use. Mike, and you, you mentioned a, a finding a bright spark who can help you and challenge you. We, we're going to meet your bright spark in a second. Um, but I think a lot of church leaders would, would say, well, I just don't have people like that. Can you just give us a tip on what to look out for in the members of your congregation uh, to just, you know, to just get, you know, empower people and sort of give them give them a job to do in the life of the church especially in the evangelism but what do you look out for for your bright sparks um I'd look out for people i think who already have contacts and that, that there's a sort of uh, motivation they want to do it they want they want to they're they people already thinking about people in their lives and how, how can they key them in um if, if there aren't people like that I think you have to do your best to create an evangelistic culture. So you have to keep uh, providing opportunities. You have to keep modeling it yourself. And I think if you keep doing that, then you will find that there's people who emerge who will get, get on board. And then when, when those people come up, 
then then use them give them permission to take a role and to work with you and to to, to push you along thanks mike um anything more on that rico i've so i've I mean, model it as a, as a as a church leader employ people who are able to connect with a non-christian and then from mike um he's, he's backed up your modeling points but also say find others who you can empower uh to to to, to, to drive this forward this culture change um, and then also maybe surprisingly start start with those already reasonably keen don't don't try and start with everyone what are, what are your Anything else from you, Rico or Mike? Yeah, I, I, I think just loving doing it yourself. That's so important and finding people that do it. But just to say for that category of very keen people immersed in the subculture, you know, we, uh, Roger Carswell, the, North, the evangelist from the North, he said to me, look, the best mission I ever did was in the New Forest where the church wouldn't allow you to join the church unless you joined a local group, basket weaving or golf or <laughs> whatever it was. You just had to, and then you're naturally in people's lives. I mean, I'm in a chess club every Wednesday morning, except I was before COVID with my kids, but you just do something and then, and then God sovereignly draws things out. And, and, and there's a doctrine of creation there, isn't it? You know, as you do those things, they're good fun. So you get replenished. So I think it's that sense of, come on, we should all be celebrating life by doing something. And, and then the relationships, Christmas will be a natural ask because you've spent once a week with them since, since, march you know so just you know for that that little group the first thing i'd say to them is go and join something local just what do you love doing do it hmm. mike anything more from you on this no i i think i think that's true but i th also think the reality of church life is always you've got people at different stages yeah and somehow you have to bear with the week <laughs> while kind of trying to prod and encourage them so i so i yeah. to move the church on there's people right now I can move on and there's people I've said that to so many times. Uh, right. I, I love them. They're great Christians. I don't know where to take them anymore. Um, so I'm working on the middle group, I, th I think. And that's, that's changing the activity of the church. And, and I think that strategy is very good, Mike. I wasn't creating that at no, all. No, I no, no, no. I'm right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be doing it, but yeah. Great yeah. guys. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So I've, I'm, I'm, I see some questions coming through on the Q and A function. Please do, if, if you've got questions you want to put to Mike and to Rico, please just put those down on the Q and A function. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, uh, and we'll come back to that uh, towards the end of the session. Um, but now we're going to meet uh, first uh, Mike's bright spark, whose <laughs> whose name is Sharon. Sharon, uh, you're a normal member of the congregation at Barnum uh, and a mom, and uh, you've been doing some great work at, 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 um, at Bethel. So, so why don't you tell us a little bit of, of what you've been up to? And I'll, I'll put a slide on the screen so people can follow along. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I've always been passionate about evangelism. Um, and when I had small children, um, started uh, helping out and then running the toddler group at church. And, um, I think my, uh, my passion grew and uh, running Christianity Explore courses was um, just, is just one of my favourite things to do. Um, but um, it is getting harder to, to recruit people. And, um, but I went along to the evangelism conference um, at All Souls um, in 2018 and um, Rico was explaining what he explained earlier about, about this cultural shift. And it just really resonated with what we were um, finding um, in our work and it really got me thinking about one-to-one -one work. Um, I then uh, managed to start meeting a friend um, in, in January who she'd done Christianity Explored with me actually a couple of years previous but she, she hadn't come through. Um, she's not yet saved. Um, I'm still actually meeting her regularly when we can. Um, and uh, somebody uh, introduced me to the word one-to-one -one material and it was just fantastic. She loved it. She's somebody who has no Bible background um, and is actually very, very wary of telling anybody in her family or circles um, that she's looking into the Bible, um, but she could understand it for the first time. It was making it accessible to her. Um, so then Mike and I started talking about um, Bethel and, and saying, but where, where's our next Christianity Explored coming from? We just couldn't see the people coming. Um, so we started talking about word one-to-one, -one, um, 
and as Mike said, as a leadership, um, they decided to uh, sort of roll this initiative out and really try to, to push it. Um, and uh, that was just really important. This wasn't just Sharon having another idea. Um, this, this was something from the leadership of the church. Um, so we got in touch with Word One to One um, and uh, agreed some training. Um, and then uh, we did target, like Mike's kind of said, we, we targeted people who we felt could really benefit from this. And I think that was so um, critical to some of those people coming along. Um, we had people who were relatively new Christians actually coming along and I'm sure it was because of that personal invite. We, we want you to come um, and, and giving people that confidence um, and, and that was great and it was um, fantastic to see how people grew um, through the training. So we did three Sunday evening sessions and um, I think quite a few people in the first session were almost at a state of panic. I, I can't do this. Um, and, and how could I possibly even think about asking my friends if they'd like to read the Bible uh, with me? But by the third session, some of those same people were already inviting people. It was like they'd had time to process, time to look at the material, um, time to pray, time to think, yes, I could do this. Um, and yes, it meant crossing a pain line to ask them, but they um, had that confidence and that was really great to see. Um, whatever those people said, um, a lot of them said no, but that, that wasn't the point. The point was that um, these Christians had stepped out and invited people. Um, so that was, uh, that was the sort of the start of us rolling it out at Bethel. And then it was about um, just constantly drip feeding it into church life, have things up the front of church or things emailed or sharing stories with people. Um, we were, of course, we were hit by lockdown. And at first I was um, thinking that we were going to lose all of that momentum that we'd been building. Um, but then Lafras started posting online about moving these word to one, uh, word one to one sessions on online, on Zoom, sharing screens and all of that. Um, so I was able to pass that on to, to people in the church. And sure enough, we then had people starting, um, uh, getting opportunities to invite people. Um, as people particularly are so much more spiritually open at the moment. And so that was a really uh, great way, I think, drip feeding. Um, I've been producing a weekly prayer bulletin to email out and just to put stories on there about people inviting, about who is managing to read with people, um, just keeps it on people's radars. And I think particularly now, um, as people, perhaps more people are looking to go back into work, back into the offices where conversations are bound to develop, this is an amazing tool that's then in their hands um, that they can then use uh, themselves. And this is something that everybody can do. It's not something that they have to look to church leaders to do or people that they think are confident enough to lead. This is just a friend with a friend uh, talking, about, um, talking about these things um, about Jesus. Thank you, Sharon. And you've got, you've now, you sort of roughly keep track. I know you can't exactly keep track of everything, but you think you've got at least five people uh, reading one-to-one uh, -one, and then the courses continue as per normal um, and five on those as well. Praise the Lord for that. And we're in regular prayer for you as a team and, and, and really encourage the Lord to work. Um, I hear Mike, I hear Mike asked a neighbor this week, so I, I did say to Sharon, nothing like a panel discussion to sort of focus the mind. <laughs> um, anyway, so thanks for, thanks for all you do, Sharon and, and, and Mike. Um, so now we're going to introduce, uh, is, is that all you have to say, Sharon? Sorry, anything else? Thank you very much. So please do ask questions to Sharon as well. Um, use the Q&A function for that. We'll come back to Sharon later. Um, so now we're going to hand over to Christine. So Christine, um, you've been a, a ministry apprentice at, at All Souls, working alongside Rico Tice, and you deserve you deserve credit uh, simply for that fact. So well done. Um, but I'm going to put a slide up, and, and you just talk us through what you've been up to. Same, uh, same. Thanks, Lafraz. Yeah, so a bit of background um, on our journey. Um, so, yeah, for the last eight years or so, um, All Souls has kind of had a rhythm of putting on a major mission week every two years. Um, and we were all set to hold a week of events in March. 
as you can see on this timeline, it almost perfectly coincided with the start of lockdown. <laughs> However, thankfully, in the months leading up to it, um, we positioned it in a way that this week of events was just one tool to help us share the gospel with those around us. So we wanted to encourage church family to not solely rely on these type of central events. So in the build-up, um, you can see that we did a lot of training to equip and empower people in general personal evangelism. And as part of that training, we gave them another tool, which was the Word One-to-One -one resource um, to help anyone um, introduce others to Jesus directly in the Bible. And it was also intended to help people follow up and explore the gospel further with the friends that they um, were hoping to bring to the mission events. So um, our journey kicked off last summer when we held four training sessions on Monday nights. Um, 60 or so people came along. So that kind of was a way that um, the keynotes kind of emerged. Um, and Carl from the Word One to One team did a lot of the training and he really inspired us with his stories and reminded us that the key was um, the power of God's word and not our own abilities and cleverness. Um, and I personally loved his point that if our friends are God's sheep, they will hear his voice. So that's why we want to lead the people that we care about to the Bible. So yeah, Carl um, gave a lot of practical tips. He gave a demo of how easy the tool is to use. There was time to practice in pairs. Um, and it definitely challenged people's mindsets to realise that roughly one out of five people, according to various research, um, would be open to learning more about Jesus. Um, and that we don't have to be Bible teachers or gifted evangelists to be Bible sharers. Um, and we sent a survey to those attendees um, and their feedback helped shape future training. Um, one of the big challenges we have being a really large church is how we train as many of the church family as possible to go beyond that kind of small group that emerged, emerged initially. So training through our Bible study groups, which we call life groups, is the most effective way of doing it at All Souls. Um, but there are various networks of life groups that are led by different church staff. So it requires quite a bit of coordination. Um, and our biggest network is our fellowship groups that mostly meet in people's homes. So RICO organized to take over four of their sessions in January and February. You can see that on the timeline. Um, so that we could do some special training to help the church family make the most of the mission week. Um, and to help generate excitement and tie everything together, we got the Word One-to-One's permission to redesign book one of their John series to match the look and feel of our mission week. And we were really blessed to have the budget to give everyone in the church family two copies each. So one for them and one for a friend. So they couldn't use that as an excuse if they didn't have one not to do it. Um, and in the um, fellowship group sessions, we had a study in John um, to help build confidence um, in God's word and the Holy Spirit in evangelism. And then there was time to practice using the tool. Plus we had um, video clips in each session from the Word One-to-One -one team. So Mark was in them and Lafraz and Carl. Um, and that just helped us train the church because it meant that um, we didn't have to rely on the Bible study group leaders to communicate everything, um, though we did have a training session with them. And the videos were really practical and covered aspects like um, doing a demo of how to use the tool, um, just general evangelism tips, how to invite someone, um, what if people say no, um, how to encourage each other um, in this shared mission as well. 
Um, so then moving on, when it came to the rest of our life groups, we tailored the training accordingly um, and managed to cover those listed here, um, including the staff team. Um, we've got a fairly big staff team, so it was really important to ensure that they were part of it and were on board with what we were doing with the broader church. Um, and then as we got closer, we interviewed a few people in services um, about how they're reading one-to-one. -one. And around March, we held some 45-minute um, drop-in sessions after church services for anyone that potentially wasn't in a life group or had missed the training. Um, we had dedicated prayer sessions for the mission and included for the use of John. And then after lockdown happened, we created a video inspired by Lefraz's vi um, video um, to show how people can continue to share John's gospel online. And we realized just how important it is to have a tool to enable any Christian to read the Bible with someone at their own pace and not have to rely on initiatives run by church or any Christian organization. Um, so we're so thankful that God was at work training our church family before the pandemic hit. Um, and we've tried to keep reading one-to-one -one on the radar in prayer meetings even now. Um, it's important to keep beating the drum because although as staff, we may be overly familiar with it and possibly even a bit sick of talking about it. Um, you know, church family are not in the same boat as us and they can always do with being reminded that it's an option. Um, and one thing that I haven't spoken to Rico about yet, but I would love to do is more of what, um, what has been talked about already, just sharing personal stories of... Um, church family members who have done it. Maybe we could do some videos to encourage others to do the same. Um, yeah, and in terms of results, I guess in such a large church, it's really difficult to get a full picture as to how many people are now reading one-to-one. -one. But based on like those that I'm aware of, and I also did a recent survey, um, we think that at least 29 people are reading one-to-one -one. And that's excluding people who have taken the step to invite, but haven't yet kind of had a yes on that. Brilliant. Christine, that's very clear and very helpful. Again, if you've got questions to put to Christine about All Souls, I'm already seeing some questions coming in. So we're going to have to rush through those at the end of the session. Thanks so much, Christine. Mark, why don't you just tell us, so, so we've got mentioned as a ministry team a few times. Can you just... Um, help those listening in understand the role we, you know, we're keen to play as we serve as we serve the churches. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think that the main thing really I want to say is, is, is how can we help? That, that's really what we want to be about. Is, is how can we, how can we help you? How can we partner together uh, to support and encourage and equip? That, that's what we want to do. Um, it's been great. I've had experience over the last year of partnering with a number of different churches. Uh, which has just been tremendous. It's been an encouragement to me, uh, but I think it's been a help and a, a support to those that have got involved as well. Um, but I think clearly the most common situation that I find in the church circles that, that I'm involved with is that the, the people by and large, they want to share the gospel. Uh, they, they, they feel they ought to, but they also want to. There's a real desire to do that, but they're just not entirely sure how to do that and where to start. Uh, and that's where I think we're, we're able to help. And, and one of the things that's been mentioned is the training. Um, and we've developed, um, myself and Lafraz and, and, and Carl as well, we've developed workshops just to help people to get, to get on board with that. So really two main things in the workshops that we do is we try and address basic questions. You know, why share the Bible? How do we do this? Uh, and just try and help people to see how they can get started and, and actually how they can keep going. Uh, so we look at these kind of basic questions. Um, but we also just try and give honest, practical help. You know, I think that's the main thing is that people can ask questions. They can, um, you know, how do I ask somebody? How do I get onto that conversation? How does that begin? You know, how do I engage with people? Um, and I think, as, as Rico said already, I think the fact that, that we're already doing this means that 
you know, we don't have all the answers, but we can share from our experience and we can share, you know, how we've tried to, to deal with things. Uh, and it's very real and it's very fresh. Uh, so that's been very helpful. Uh, so I'd look, really like to just kind of uh, keep that ringing in your ears. How can we help you? How can we help your church? Um, the workshops could be a, a one-off to kind of introduce, uh, but we've found the most momentum uh, that's been gained as we, as we partner on, on two or three occasions together. Um, not only to deliver training sessions, but also um, after that to, to, to feed in ongoing stories. Um, it's just so encouraging to hear what people are doing and, and to be able to share that with the, the links that we've got has been, has been very good through social media, uh, through stories, through, through whatever means we can. So we do want to be an ongoing support so that um, reading the Bible and sharing that uh, is sustainable and becomes part of the life uh, of the church. Uh, I've, I've just personally, I've just found a, a huge encouragement to, to be able to read with people uh, that are friends of mine. Uh, it's just an absolute joy. Last night I was reading with a friend uh, who, who actually said to me, uh, can, we, can we read more together? Can, can we read up more regularly? Um, and it's just, it's brilliant, you know? Uh, so it's a huge encouragement to me. Um, but, but equally, um, it's just encouraging to hear of lots of people, very ordinary, everyday people like you and me, uh, just meeting with friends and, and reading. Um, so if, as I say, the main message here is how can we help? <laughs> Uh, and if, if you're interested in what we're doing, if you'd like us to get involved and be able to, to support you uh, in your ministry, then please, uh, please get in touch. Great. Okay, thanks, Mark. So we're going we're gonna to open up for questions now and we'll tell you, tell you how to get in touch with Mark as well. Um, so, so I'm going to start with the easy one. So there's been a couple of requests to just uh, walk through the notes and show how the notes work. Um, so on our YouTube channel, also on the website, there's, um, you know, there's, there's introductory videos that just show you people walking through the notes. I've just, I've just uh, chatted the YouTube channel, uh, so you can pick it up there. Uh, we, we also have introductory webinars. So if you go to our training resources page, which is under the Get Started uh, tab, there's regular webinars which which Mark uh, conducts, which uh, you can invite your your ministry team or you can invite uh, some keynotes in your church uh, if if they're new to this. Invite them to one of those webinars or get in touch with Mark and let him come to your church and and, and do something uh, for you online at the moment, of course. Um, well, Fraz, can I just throw something in on that? Yes, please. You know, with the eight years we try to train it. When we did material. And the uncovered material w w was great. When we did this material, because it was the question without the answer, that was intimidating. The revolutionary thing about this material is you get the question and the answer. So you just read through and it's so unintimidating. So we're convinced now we've got a tool and getting people started on it, the tool couldn't be simpler. It's just a question of having get, getting them the ability to say, do you want to look at 18 sentences of the Bible that are just amazing? Not do you want to read the Bible with me? That's too intimidating. Just 18 sentences at the beginning. Let's have a look. Now, it, what's massively helped us is how simple the tool is. Thanks, Rika. Yes. And, 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 and certainly, again, join one of those webinars. Mark will take you through the whole sort of thinking process, how to invite, how to engage with those around you, how to run the first session. It's a, it's a, it's a good introduction. Um, so let's start with questions. Uh, here's a person wondering whether the one-to-one -one materials work in Asian church cultures, um, especially when Bible reading one-to-one -one has not been the norm in the congregation. What are the steps you suggest to get them there? I don't know if any, any of you are experts in Asian church culture. I'd just say two things. London is very multicultural and I've personally read with a number of, uh, of Asian friends. Um, so, so in terms of the people, uh, I think it's the same things that Rico highlighted in terms of this gives them something to explore below the radar, meeting with you one-to-one, -one, meeting with someone uh, they, they know and trust. In terms of church culture, I, it's not unique to, the Asia, to, to Asia to have a church culture that's not used to reading the Bible one-to-one. -one. I think that's what Mike was, was sharing. So any, anyone would we to say, that? Fraz, would we say the big issue with Asia is they, they often have a, a great deal of respect for the teacher. So what you need to say is that we're all sharers. Um, and, and, and so let's just get it open. Don't, you know, we've, the, the, the pastor will have a breakdown if it's just him. 
So we all have to take, we've all got Bibles, we've got to do something with them. So I think that's what I find I have to push hardest with the Asia constituency saying, no, you, you can be a sharer, it's not just the pastor. Great, and I guess, and I guess you've, got the, you've got the notes helping you sort of blowing yeah. your wing almost. Uh, so you've got a Bible teacher in some ways uh, on your side as you use the notes. Yeah. So you say to them, sheep give birth to sheep, shepherds don't give birth to sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I'll, I'll, I'll ponder that one. Um, as a CU leader in London, uh, Christian Union, what might it look like to implement this within a within a Christian Union rather than a church context? Maybe that's one for Mark. Um, yeah. Th thanks. I, I, I'll be very honest. With you, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never um, experienced that, but I have been a student, and it was a wee while ago. But the, I think that the kind of main thing for me still happens is that it's momentum. So, so if people are if people are talking about, you know, I was doing this, it's great. Then, then people catch it, and I guess that's that's true in lots of church work is that people catch things as as much as they're taught things. Um, and I think that actually, if you've got a few people that are willing just to, to, just to run with it, uh, there's a guy that I know locally who's um, gone back home for, for, for studies, obviously, he's, he's back home, uh, and he's meeting with a couple of friends online, um, student age group, uh, and I just love the fact that he's willing to just, just to run with it, and he's really enjoying it. So I think, I think the big thing is it's not, I don't think it's, it's particularly about demographics of splitting and so on. I think it's actually if you've got people that are willing to, to go with it and run with it uh, and, then, and then see if people catch the vision with that. That's really helpful, Mark. Um, here's a question about the, the three sessions at uh, Bethel, uh, Mike and Sharon. Uh, are, those, are those sessions available to share? That was a question to you guys. No, I don't think so. Not unless you want to repeat them. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's... So there was another question about a off-the-peg training program and, and uh, Tim, apologies. I did say to you a few months ago, this is Tim asking the question, that we are working on it. We are working on a off-the-peg training program. It's, it's much more difficult to deliver something that's compelling content when you're not in the room. Um, so we're not there yet. We are working on it. But in the meantime, we've got Mark. So speak to Mark and let him come and do something for you. It's much more, it's much better interactive, because it's you know your your own congregation can put their questions to someone who's, you know, who's, who's working on this all the time. So so please get in touch with Mark. Um, I and we'll try I think I think we um we have got the recordings, but um I think because Lafras was doing it, he was obviously talking about personal. Uh, context and situations they're not appropriate to just publicly share um, and so uh, I think that's why um, perhaps they're best not more widely shared. Um. I think it's much more exciting to, to, to interact with someone uh, and, 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 and we'll, we're hoping to create something for, you know that's better content than just 40 minutes of someone recording someone speaking which it takes it's, it's more investment of time, resources, etc. but we are working on that. Lafraz, would it be helpful for people to say in their churches, would you come and join me in the laboratory? We've got to work out what this means locally. So say to your non-Christian friends, I, I've, I've got to try this out. I mean, you know, they've given it from London, but what do they know? Come on, you know, so, so I, I get non-Christians to come and help me. I say, just come and give me a hand, mate. Go through, give me some feedback. Be a guinea pig. But actually, pe people enjoy, you know, and, and particularly yeah. with lockdown, with the opportunities, just, but, but what each church needs to do is begin to develop its own narrative of how the resource has gone. And you learn by mistakes. You say, well, that didn't work. Well, we, we know the word of God's important, but that didn't work. Let us try this one. And, and you know, you, so I think it's that sense of create your own laboratory and, and, and get even non-Christians involved in it. I've got a friend called Charlie. He comes and does everything because he thinks he's being nice. He is actually. I wish he'd get converted, but he, you know, he, he comes and <laughs> pops in, you know. Yeah. Set up a laboratory. Have a go. Yeah. All right. So here's a question from Cape Town. Uh, Denzel's asking uh, about, well, they, they started promoting Christians Explored. Six people responded, all of them Christians, albeit new and growing Christians. Then they did it again. The same six came back. Uh, no one else. Uh, and and Denzel's feeling discouraged and a bit frustrated that that people aren't interested in sharing the message of Jesus. So Rico and Mike, could you could you just maybe help encourage our, our brother? How can he 
how can you stir things up uh, in that environment? Oh, my dear brother. I mean, I, you know, this is hard when Christians aren't reaching out, but honestly, I, I think we mustn't say you've got to do it. We've got to give them the biblical motivations, you know, Gehenna, there's a place called hell. Do we believe that? Will we cross the pain line and talk about it? Um, grace, what does it mean to have my identity in God's grace? So whether you accept or reject me doesn't make me valuable. What makes me valuable is, is God's grace. That at the heart of being godly is doing evangelism. A lot of people, they think they've got, they've got a model of godliness that's got nothing to do with evangelism. So my dear brother, honestly, I just think we've got to go back to the biblical motivations and tell people again and then say, do we want to do this? But let the Bible, you know, the knowledge of the truth leads to godliness. So I feel that despair sometimes, but I've got to go back to scripture and say, look, if this is true, what are we going to do? Mike, what would you say? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's difficult because um, it sounds like the church is at very early stages of establishing an evangelistic culture. And I, I think I think the best thing one can do is uh, model it yourself. And uh, I think I think the style of preaching is important. So um, there's styles of preaching that are very much to the converted. That's the culture of the church. People are well taught. Um, but you're always teaching with the unbeliever in mind. So as your congregation listen, you're answering objections that their friends have. You're you're um, touching on issues that come up in their conversations, and they're they're thinking, "I wish my friend was here. I wish my friend could hear that." So so everything about the leaders is saying I, i'm missional i'm not just here to preach to the converted we're here to put out a message to to uh we're, we're here to spread spread the spread the kingdom of god um and i think that's that's a start to creating creating a culture and then initiative after initiative and push after push um and um pray and god will bless that I mean, we, we've been amazed with our Christianity Explored course at the moment. I mean, I've got a, 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 a woman who's been converted the last couple of years, and she lives out in, in Hertfordshire, and she's bringing her mum with her to my group from Devon. So the walls have come down in terms of who you can get. So, you know, what, I, what I'd be saying to Denzel is, look, you've, you've actually got the whole of South Africa. They, if, if, if people can, if they're on Zoom, if they've got that technology, and, you know, then they can Zoom in be in the breakout group so it's just it's just mm. staggering who now can come with a close friend you know i can bring my close friend jade can bring her mum because um the technology enables it i've no idea what the technology is there but suddenly you're not just looking at people you can bring along to church they can come you know from anywhere and it's like doing with one-to-one -one. this is what's been incredible about the last three months Thanks, Rico. So uh, Steve's asking um, about a, f a five week, they're five weeks into Life Explored on Zoom uh, with two more sessions to go. How can they integrate the, or offer this as a follow on? What's the best way to do that? Well, well, you've got to get the leaders of the groups to be then be saying who they're going to meet with one to one during the summer. So you start training the leaders at the beginning of the session saying, when you get into your little breakout groups, which ones are you going to read with and say the next thing we're going to do is is individual stuff more flexibly, particularly because people are going to be away on holiday come July, August. Mm. So you, you, you get the leaders to say, OK, I'll be meeting with Ed and um, we'll, 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 I'll do that with him. So you, you and, and then you get that put into people's minds the last couple of weeks. So you say there's a John one to one course we're running because it's holidays. We're not going to be meeting in a group, but we'll be meeting individually. Please book up and. Here's the detail of it. Great, thanks. Um, there's a question about the sample books. I've just sent you a link uh, on our resources library. You can see book one, book two, all the books. They're all free. You just give us your email address so we can be in touch and you can get access to the books there. Again, do watch the videos on the Get Started pages so that you can see how to use those books uh, or get in touch so we can get you started. There's a question about a Spanish translation. Please get in touch with me uh, via the contact us uh, button on the, on the World One to One website. There's a question about the one meter social distancing rule, which we're not gonna go into. Um, meet, meet online or meet in a park. We've, I spoke to a lady on Saturday who led her neighbor to Christ through the garden fence during lockdown. Isn't that one? <laughs> I think there's ways you can get together, especially when, when the sun is out like it is at the moment. 
Um, let's see, there's, there's a few questions that have been chatted as well. Uh, just give me a sec. Mike, you said that it's essential we have an assessment of how we're getting on evangelistically. How, how do you do that? Um, I, I think pretty much through trial and error. Um, I think if, you're in, if you have a lot of evangelistic initiatives, you know the people who invite. And then you need ground level information <laughs> from people who, who don't invite. Um, you know, what, what, are the what are the barriers? Where, where are people at? And I think if leaders are constantly thinking missionally, what can we do here? Then, then I, think you, I think you form a picture. Um, you know, we read about the, the church in the book of Acts and what it's like when people are full of the Holy Spirit. And you think we could pray for that, but what can we do to, to make that happen? And I think if you're, if you're thinking that, you're putting on initiatives, you, you kind of get a feel for, for, for where people are at. Thanks, Mike. Brother, I think there are always three great principles of evangelism. We've got a 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5, preach Jesus as Lord. We've got to have integrity. And, and that means speaking about things like wrath and repentance. We've got to do it. Secondly, sovereignty. We've got to say our prayers. God, we're here because of a miracle. We can call people to repent. But if God doesn't regenerate them, we can't do anything. He's the one that builds. So number one, tell the truth. Number two, pray. But number three, creativity ourselves for your servants for Jesus' sake, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. Now that means, brothers and sisters, this is so exhausting. We've got to keep throwing energy at it, as Mike says. So we try one thing and then we try another and, and then we go again. And, you know, you've got someone like Sharon who can throw some energy at it. Praise God, I've got, you know, Christine. But we, so we've got to have, we've got to tell the truth. We've got to pray and we need energy to keep trying stuff. And, um, and you know, the biggest place for energy is, is, Luke 15, one to nine, where you go after lost sheep. But it's, it's keeping on saying, God, please give me energy to go again. Mm. Just motivate people to pick up individuals. You know, I think that's there. Mm. And then stick in the church diary, a structure where evangelism is going to be coming. Christmas, Easter, a little, you know, run up to a CE course in January, another one in September. But if you haven't got it in the diary, if it's not coming up in the calendar, it can just get lost. But you say, no, no, here's the calendar. We're all available, aware of it. I think that's crucial too. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. I, I want to respect the time we've allocated for this. We've only got a few minutes left. Anyone with any closing thoughts, any humdingers you want to throw in? And then I'll, I'll just share, share an idea now of how you can follow up on this session. Closing remarks, Mike, Rico. I think uh, in one way, all you need to move things on is a few key champions. You see a few people getting it and then you encourage them, you promote them. And uh, depending on the size of your church, I think, you know, people well enough, you, you end up saying to them, well, why don't you invite that person? <laughs> you would, you know, you know, you were talking about, I think, where you see people who are almost getting it. Um, you just need a few people like that to start moving things on. Thank you, Mike. I think getting your church to score the first church they went to on how they were out of 10, preaching from the front, small group, one-to-one -one and at home, in 90% of churches, people have naught out of 10 for one-to-one. -one. It just wasn't done. And you say, well, that's the silver bullet. Well, you know, you, it automatically happened with you, but now we've got to be intentional because the culture's hardening. And so that sense of score yourself one to 10, what was the, what was the preaching like from the front? What was the small group like? If there was no small group, they get naught. Was there anyone doing one-to-one -one work? And then they suddenly go, gosh, it didn't even happen. You say, that's the culture change. That's the silver mm. bullet. Mm. Off at home, they were reading themselves. But I find when I do that survey of four lots of one to 10, often people suddenly get what we're on about. Thank you. Thank you so much. I realize we didn't get to all the questions. I'll, we will try and follow up on those individually or please get, uh, feel free to get in touch uh, via the website. Mark, anything, anything to encourage folks to get in touch? So this is, this is how to get in touch. So there's a, if, if you want to talk specifically about um, uh, training and enthusing your church, please just go to the church leaders page and, and leave your details there or feel free to use the contact form if you want to discuss anything else you heard uh, today. Uh, Mark, final yeah, thoughts to encourage folk? Yeah, I, I, I just think um, in terms of, if you're interested in getting in touch, that 
I'd really be yeah very happy to do something that suits your context because uh, th there is a general picture, but there's also very much a specific context. So just very happy to chat that through with you and see where we go. That's that's often been um, the, the springboard to the most fruitful sessions. Uh, it's just that conversation. Uh, so please do get in touch. Um, and 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 really the, the main thing for me is. It's just giving people the absolute liberty that they get from asking. <laughs> just, just, just go and try, um, and it's it's a great sense of liberty to be able to to do that and uh, and encourage other people to do that as well.